I hope today to just spend a little time taking you on a virtual program visit to a place called Nutrition Rocks. And the two program leaders at Nutrition Rocks, really what I hope to put a spotlight on is the important work that they made over time, over several years together in designing that program and kind of nuancing and changing some of the program structures based on what they saw working or not working. So we'll have a similar kind of breakout time to talk about some of those program structures. Many of them I think will probably resonate with your own experience and we'll invite you to be thinking about the ways in which those program choices support opportunities for socio-emotional learning of the kinds of examples that we've just been talking about this morning. So Nutrition Rocks, just briefly, is a program engaging teens ages 13 to 18 in planning to run health nutrition camps for younger youth in the summer. So there's a nutrition component, a healthy cooking and eating component, and a physical activity component. So during the school year, October to May, this group of teenagers, every time they get together, they're taking parts of already identified nutrition curriculum, and they're trying out activities with each other. So they're actually doing recipes, participating in the planned physical activity and so forth. So they're trying that out with their peers and they always end those sessions with a, what did we like, what did we not like, how would this need to be changed? It's toward that goal of making decisions about what they're gonna do in the summer with younger youth in these camps. So then comes summertime, the adults are really fading back and these teens are running the show. Youth show up at that camp and it's led by these teenagers. And, and I'll tell you a little bit more detail, but the campers are constantly changing. They only come for a week at a time. And there's a different group in the morning and in the afternoon. So there's this, they're doing some of the same activities, but with constantly changing groups of younger youth. So that's a little bit of the context for socio-emotional learning. So, Again, I want to spend some time acknowledging that leaders who care about socio-emotional learning and see this space as a place to do that important work are really juggling with this problem of complexity. We've heard, and even in Dorothy's opening remarks, that real world, challenge, sustained project-based experience, all of that brings this complexity. And we have heard from Natalie's work, worry and even a kind of um, a, a, a roadblock experience that could be very negative can be turned into a catalyst for really powerful learning, but not always and not naturally, not by itself. And so as frontline youth workers, how do we design for the supports to make that happen? So some of the decisions that we have to make and the, the program leaders at Nutrition Rocks, they're thinking about who the stakeholders are. In each of these, I'm kind of putting on a continuum of more, toward more complexity, so we start, well, okay, so sorry, I forgot where my clicks were going. We'll talk just a little bit about decisions about who the stakeholders are, goals, the time frame, and what our outcomes are. So on stakeholders, a kind of, mm, so we start with our internal stakeholders. We're thinking about the youth. What do they care about? Why are they here? And then of course you have the adult leaders. What do they care about? Why are they here? That's the internal audience. It gets more complex as you start thinking about external audiences. And some of the many of the programs that we were studying actively try to create a real world experience by bringing in those external audiences. So you have a theater group that's performing for others. In this case, the external audience was the younger youth, the campers their family, 
The program is done in partnership with the local park district. So all of those are external stakeholders that add this level of complexity. The goals, again, we are care about. We start with what the youth care about, but then we acknowledge that these external stakeholders have their own outcomes and goals that they're thinking about. A time frame in the, in the school year in Nutrition Rocks, it can be very flexible. It's this group of teens. They can decide that Saturdays is what works for them or Wednesday evenings or there'll be a school holiday and they'll decide we need more time together, let's take advantage of that Monday off and get together. So it's very driven by what works for the youth. We get to the summer in the camps and it's very fixed. There is a start time, an end time, a drop off time, a pick up time. And so again, we see a movement toward complexity in this program. And then lastly, with outcomes. When those teens are working together during the school year, they're doing activities for each other in that peer group. Failing or getting stuck or not knowing where to go next has a different kind of consequence in that space than it does when doing those activities with campers that have paid to come to this teen-led camp. So we see a movement toward complexity in terms of the consequence for those different stakeholders. So this is kind of that, that messy world that so many of you navigate every day and are very familiar with. What choices do we make? How do we manage this in a way that's ultimately gonna be productive for the young people that we're serving? So um, just to connect to um, Reed's opening talk in terms of the socio-emotional learning, when we ask youth in this program what they were learning, we see many examples of action skills. They are planning and anticipating problems. They're learning instructional methods. They're doing emotional management with themselves as a peer group, but they're also doing the hard work of figuring out how to motivate campers different groups of younger youth that are coming in over the summer. They're learning how to work as a team. They're learning behavior management and so forth. So we see a, a, a rich range of socio-emotional learning in this case study. So program structures. The first one that I'd like to talk about is this big idea of cycles. The leaders in this program are very influenced by a model of experiential learning, a do, reflect, apply. And so each session where the teens are meeting during the school year, they're trying an activity, they're reflecting on it, and then they're thinking about the implications for their ultimate goal in the summer, and then the next time they meet, they're doing that over again. So they're doing these cycles of familiar activity over the course of the school year. And then they get into the summer and the same thing. They have a plan of activities, but they're implementing that with different groups of campers, of younger youth over the summer. So this cycle, this repetition structure creates an opportunity for practice, refinement, adjustment, an appreciation of how a plan gets nuanced over time in different settings with different groups, and again, is, is something that was identified as very supportive of the socio-emotional learning that the leaders wanted to see happen. So I'm gonna dig in a little deeper, take a closer look at an episode from both the school year portion and the teen-led. Uh, summer piece. And I'll just tell you a little bit more. I th I've already mentioned this. The sessions where they would meet during the school year, they're planning and trying out lessons. Every session they end with reflection. Very intentional reflection with questions that the youth kind of became familiar with of what did you learn? What do you want to use? Would you want to use this activity in the summer? What would you change? So again, that reflection structure is another important element that this program used. So one example from that summer that is another program structure, and that's an intentional valuing of learning from mistakes. So Reed started out, there's these things we design, 
like pairing of kids in specific ways. But then there's also this culture of expectation, ways of thinking, and the things we value that are cultivated by leaders. And so in this case, we have a leader saying, it's okay if it doesn't turn out all right, because you'll learn something from that. What did we do? Where did we go wrong? And we heard multiple times from these leaders that they learn all the time from youth that these teens would come up with things that they had never anticipated. And with the ultimate goal being to teach these younger youth, they really valued that those teens had a perspective on what would be motivating and interesting that they may not have in the same way. So part of this culture of valuing mistakes was also embraced with a value in the knowledge and the expertise that the teens brought to this youth program. So an example of learning from mistakes. Has anyone made a dirt cake or a dirt pie? A couple people. Okay, so it was a recipe. The kids saw the picture. They were pretty excited to make this recipe. And at one point in following the instructions, it said, add pudding. And they had a box of pudding there, but the recipe said, add pudding. And so one of the groups, you know, they have access to the kitchen and all these supplies decided that they needed to make the pudding using the instructions on the pudding box by adding milk and then add that to the rest. And it was only later, once they'd added the milk and made the pudding and put it in, that it seemed really runny compared to what we see as this kind of layered product here. And they figured out that it really meant the powder, just the pudding mix and not the pudding. And so they're in this, oh, what do we do now? And it led to this really interesting problem solving. One group decided maybe we should get the blender and maybe that will kind of make it thicker over time. Or um, another, one of the leaders came over and she's more the youth development person and not the nutrition person. I don't know if she'd made this recipe either. And she, she suggested that they um, break up the cookies and put the cookies in and that might solidify it a little bit more. And then the other leader came over and they realized, no, the cookies were supposed to be safe for layering and not put in them. So, and they said, oh, that wasn't us. You know, that, that, that was her. She made that mistake. And it was this, but it was one of these moments that we saw time and time again where it was like, that's okay. We all do that and we learn something and they ended up revising the recipe instructions to say pudding powder when they used it. You know, just a small tweak, but it came out of this permission and this opportunity to learn from mistakes. So we had youth give lots of examples in talking about this. Even though everything is structured, things can get out of hand, especially in the summer, working with different groups of youth. And then you need to know how to deal with it. So mistakes not only get us maybe to a better solution, but being able to anticipate and handle mistakes are being recognized by youth in this program as a skill that will help them in the future. We think about what would go in order, so it's like just thinking about the whole process and not just like skipping over. It's this interesting balance that we saw that they valued the planning, but especially the veteran teens saw pretty quickly that in the real world you have a plan, best laid plan, and it's not always going to work out. And that's something to be prepared for, embrace, and kind of be ready for. So again, a structure that these cycles facilitated in Nutrition Rocks was a progression from lower stakes in the school year, where it's just activity within the peer group, to higher stakes in the summer when they're engaging with more external audiences, with the campers, their families, and the park district. So in the summer, I, as I said before, the adults fade back. The teens really assume responsibility for the day-to-day. -day. Novice teens are intentionally paired with veteran teens. And there were many, many examples of even campers, the younger campers saying, how old do I have to be 
to be a teen leader. And so you see that this program has been around long enough that many of those teens were campers. And the older teens who've done a summer already under their belt are intentionally paired with the brand new teen leaders. Another important structure. I've mentioned that because the children are changing, the younger campers are changing all the time, that, that creates this complexity, this chance for socio-emotional learning because they're having to kind of adjust um, what they think might work to those different uh, participants. And then we see continued reflection structures after every day and actually they do it at lunch in between because they have a different group in the morning and a different group in the afternoon. What worked? What did we learn? What's our game plan? What are we gonna do next? So that's a regular ongoing structure. So um, just a highlight from the summer period, the leaders talk about the value of learning from varied situations. We want the youth to be in charge and to make the decisions. And if they come up with an idea, we want them to follow through. We believe in experiential learning by doing. So again, those adjustments, those fine tuning, it's not just during the school year when they're in planning mode, it's really when they're on the ground working with the campers through the summer. So an example, kickball was a physical activity designed for the summer camp. And I don't even remember if this happened right in the first week. I think they'd tried this out. They'd done kickball as a peer group during the school year, and they thought, oh, yeah, this will be lots of fun for the campers. Well, one day they were playing kickball in such a way that the teen leaders were with the campers. And a couple of the teen leaders got really into it. So much so that it got a little bit more competitive than they had anticipated. And this resulted in a younger camper being knocked down a little, you know, I don't even know if he got a scrape, but started crying. And the leader, one of the leaders noticed from afar, and one of the teen leaders said, no, we've got this. We've got this. And the teen leaders huddled together and they used their lunch time to say, how are we gonna make sure that never happens again? And the teens by themselves made this executive decision that they were no longer gonna do kickball, but they had in kind of their toolkit from their practice during the school year, this ships and sailors collaborative activity that they decided was much more suited to the kind of collaborative goal that they had for physical activity and they just weren't gonna do kickball at all. So that was, that was their solution. So again, the, the teens in this program talk about things like acknowledging that the plan that they had has to be adjusted. In this case, they're talking more about motivation. You have to make sure so they'll understand and they'll wanna keep playing, so not too hard, right? It's interesting, this is what we as youth workers would be thinking and planning for the teens, and they're thinking about that for the younger campers. You know, the older kids, you have to make it a challenge. The younger kids, you have to kind of adjust in what they're gonna be interested in. So this, again, that really important socio-emotional work that they're, they're working through. So, again, the thing that I wanna leave you with that I don't think is a new idea for you is that the same thing that creates rich opportunities for socio-emotional learning, real-world complexity, also presents a challenge and leaves us with decisions that we have to make about how to make worry a productive catalyst and not a showstopper. Or any of these other social emotional experiences, how do we find that right level of support? And these examples that I've, and I'm just do a quick review for you of some of those structures that Nutrition Rocks they used using cycles as places for over time progression of planning and doing, structured youth reflections, opportunities to learn from mistakes, modeling by adults in the beginning of the program and fading over time, a progression of activity that starts out lower stakes to higher stakes, opportunities to adjust skills to different kinds of settings, and opportunities for novice youth to learn from veterans. 
are just a few of the program structures from Nutrition Rocks. So we want to transition. These are summarized in a handout on your tables in the purple sheet. And we'd like to invite you to think about a program that you're familiar with or care about. And either an activity or sequence of activities in that program, what do you see examples of these kinds of structures in that program? And how do they facilitate socio-emotional learning? And are there new structures here that aren't in your program? And what do you think that those might add? So we're going to give you, again, 15 minutes or so to, to think about that. And we'll be walking around to listen in and, and hear, learn from your discussions. Thank you. OK, everyone, I'm going to bring us back together. I apologize because I know when I'm at the table, this is the best part. That's the good stuff that's happening right now. Um, we had some people around and listening. And one of the things in the room here today that seemed to resonate with at least the tables that we had some people at was the idea of progression and how to do that as a way of setting youth up for success and empowering productive experiences that deal with increasing challenge and complexity. Um, and at one table, an observation that there's value and opportunities to make the bigger mistakes early on in a safer kind of place with lower consequence and learn from those and preparing for more challenging activity. There was a lot of discussion about the value of reflection, but accompanied with that was the question of how do you really create that space? What's, what's the magic of doing that? What goes into that? Um, which I won't attempt to try to answer, but that might be something for us to kind of continue thinking about in the Q&A part. Um, another really powerful question about how do we teach adults when to step in versus step back? And that is a really powerful question as well. Um, and I would like to just kind of summarize. I've highlighted some of the things that leaders, youth workers do intentionally that's, that I think about as kind of design work. But I would also point out that a lot of what we saw at Nutrition Rocks also had to do with this kind of culture piece that was this bigger kind of what are the norms, what are the values, what are we attached to as part of belonging to this group. And one of the important values of Nutrition Rocks was that we succeed or fail together. And I think that what I just saw that again and again as a kind of powerful underpinning of any of the structures that we have up here, how to create that, how to build that sense. Someone asked the question what the application process was for teen teachers. And it's really interesting because there is no application process. They accept anyone. And the leaders talk and they'll accept them at any time which was even more kind of surprising for me. I guess I'm a little bit more of a control, kind of pre-organized. I'd kind of like to have my teens ready in October and have them for this. But they would accept teens in May. And they also talked, they had really powerful examples of teens that were just not stepping up. You know, they were like the problem child. And it was also, it was more troublesome for the other teens even than the program leader because they're relying on each other and that teamwork and the slacker, the bossy pants, the whatever that Reed was talking about earlier, they don't give up on the teens. That was another kind of important value. We, we wrap around them and we just do everything we can to lift them up and they had these powerful examples of someone who started out as the slacker and over time, a year later, two years later, they were the leader mentoring a newcomer to the space. So that kind of, that's part of the design. That's part of the important work that the leaders are doing. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Reed. I think he has a few summary comments, and then we're going to have some time for Q&A.